This guy here, his name is, I'll show you. This is his name. Larry Abner Finisco. Finisco. Yeah. So this guy here, if you ever want to switch realtors, he told me how much the house is worth and he had how many days the house is for sale in 2017 for a certain amount and how much Tom bought it for. And he said that, um, I'm not getting commission off of this. I'm, I'm just helping you guys out to, to try to make your sale a little more smooth. Um, this guy said that it was on the market for 27 days at 143,000 and then Tom got it for 12050 and then um it's a three bedroom condo and the thing with the three bedroom condos is they're hard to sell um because the two bedroom condos with 250 condo fees are really easy to sell if they're maintained really well and they look pretty but his is beat up needs 5000 worth of cleaning and painting so you could sell it right now for 105 but if you put in 5000 you could maybe get 120 if you're lucky I, he said he doubts it and even if you sell it for 120 the, the prospect of buyers are so hard to find so uh, this guy came inside the house. We let him in because um, there's a, a friend of mine. He wanted, he's looking to buy condos and he said, just let him in. He was in the house, in Tom's house for five minutes. He just said that what he saw is Tom put no money into it and he knows how, how much the house is worth. He has all the records of it and he has access to all the files about how many days it was for sale for 143, how Tom bartered with him, got him down to one. 2500 and uh yeah you these houses with 250 condo fees and taxes are 1200 a year and snow removal and uh garbage cleanup and grass cutting is the only thing the condo fees involve they don't involve the roof they don't involve siding or you have to go there's six units in the you have to ask every single person to try to find, to come up with an agreement. And each person puts down 10K and then they'll get a roof. But there's the condo fee lady doesn't really pay for it. She just takes your 250 and doesn't give you anything back. So also this building is fairly old and nobody really would want it, especially that's in a very, really bad area. The only people that would want it are Filipinos, Vietnamese and Chinese. And the people who, but I'm just saying that's the market. Um, so those people love bartering and they love lowballing and waiting out. They don't like, in, they're not like they're really anxious people. So they don't really, they're not needy. They kind of like play game, a lot of games. So you may go through a lot of those people. So uh, this guy here who we met today, he seems really honest guy and he's from a really good company. So just letting you guys know, I'm not in it for money. I'm not help, like, looking to make anything i'm just here to try to make it smooth tom would probably have wanted me to help you guys out if he was alive the voices i'm hearing are do your best to help the sisters because uh, of all the things that he gave me in the past so uh, my time is not really that high of value right now because i don't have kids or a wife and mm, right now a day to me of helping someone doesn't isn't calculated too high but let's say if i had a career and i was like a i worked at a big company and i had a lot of stress and payments and i'm sure that tom would say no you don't you shouldn't help my sisters but because i'm in a situation where i have time to help it's not really costing me anything so yeah i'm just sending you guys this video to say um overall if i were you in my opinion I would not sell the house. I would rent it for a year, maybe two. Wait till COVID and wait till the market bites. Oil and gas has been fluctuating the last 50 years. And it's like never the same. So if I were you, I wouldn't sell now. Because you would lose Tom's $35,000 down payment. You you would all split nothing. And you could rent it out and build. And real estate only goes up. By the way, Tom's house only dropped five percent since he bought it, but it's still an impossible sell right now. Meaning you're only going to have to pay the the hydro to keep the pipes not frozen in the winter. You're going to have to pay the property uh, condo fees and the the taxes, which are twelve hundred a year. So if I were you, I wouldn't sell. My opinion is. I don't know what realtor talked you into anything, but this guy here, 
I would say just rent it out. Um, maybe get the Pakistani to be the landlord or something and just rent it out. Each person charge them three fifty a month or four hundred bucks a month. Get three of them in there, and uh, and there's my friend right here. I've known him for five years. His name is Colin Anton. This guy's so honest. He was a multi millionaire in equity in the nineties. He used to own restaurants in the USA. He owned houses all around Calgary, and he even owned properties in the U.S., and his wife was an American citizen. And he, I lived with him in 2015. I've known him for five years, and uh, he just he was Tom's friend. He was going to rent out the house to Tom. He, Tom was going to let this guy be the landlord. So there's emails. If you check Tom's email, he... Colin was going to be the landlord when Tom was going to go overseas to Vietnam. He was going to collect the money for the all the people who live in this area. He so he had plans for Tom for Colin to take over the house. So maybe if you get a guy like this to live upstairs, or you could rent out each room to a Filipinos. Those people are always on time with their payments and this guy's Asian friendly. He had Asian girlfriends, Asian, he's been all over the world and he um, lives with Asian Asians right now. Um, he lives the Taiwanese and Chinese. They own the house and he lives with all kinds of Chinese right now down the street. So this guy, I would say do just rent it out. That's my opinion. You don't have to follow anything I say. Uh, my opinion is my opinion. If I were you guys, because you guys are in good financial position now, it's best to leave it, rent it out, wait it out. Don't go for the quick sale because real estate in Calgary, in my opinion, because of the market I see, my vision, America, including Canada, which is one, North America, these two countries connected will, will prosper uh, in another 15 years, 10 years. And if you want to wait the house out even two years, it's going to climb up. Because, like, no way the US, U.S. barrel oil has been down since 2014, but it kind of bounced back in 2015, and then it died off again, and it was okay for a couple of years. And I don't know. My opinion is uh, real estate in Calgary can't stay down because oil is something you al you're always going to need. Always, because right now you cannot rely on Tesla and electric cars and a hydro, hydro. You can't rely on nuclear power or um, solar. You can't. The thing with the future is they're always going to need fossil fuels because the world, there's so much road distance and cars that run on electricity cannot do what the demand is. So. There's more logistics and transport trucks built every day, and those things carry heavy equipment. The electrics issue is only for people who commute around cities like downtown Vancouver. Really, Russia, Canada, and China are the three largest countries. They demand so much fossil fuels, and they're going to demand man more for making their plastic goods. And uh, oil is only going to go up. It's not going to go down. And especially that there's hardly any left in the earth, like it's going to mean the oil prices will go up because the because supply is lower. So I don't know. My This is just an eight, eight minute and 40 second video right now. I'm going to be going to BC very soon. So hopefully this video, this information I have, this research helps you guys a little. And maybe you already knew 90% of what I said. You already discussed it. You already researched it. But if I gave you 10% of new information that you haven't heard yet, that's pretty much why I made this video. Uh, he does not drink, do drugs, and he has a beautiful car. He has 1.4 million worth of uh, investments in Saskatchewan properties that he can't get because it's stuck in lo his lawyer. His parents left him a, him and his three brothers' property in northern Saskatchewan. He can't sell it because it's stuck in in a five to ten year law because they're trying to. Um, the lawyers are back. Sorry. Potash, yeah, potash. So they're trying, to close the deal. they're trying to close the deal. So this guy is from a good family. His English, English family from Western Canada. He has money. He's not a thief, and you can trust this guy over the Pakistani guy. The Pakistani guy who sleeps over there. He's he's he doesn't steal, but he's full of shit. 
And Tom is complaining for every day how he lies and tricks and lies and deceives and but he doesn't steal. He doesn't steal. He just he just lies because he's trying to he's trying to he he's like a a, a farmer. He's milking a cow. That's what I the Pakistani guy is a milker. He 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 manipulates the truth so that he can it can benefit him to the greatest. And if you're looking for a landlord, this guy is more straight thinking. The only reason why he wants to do this is because he's 63 years old and he's looking just to uh, be more involved with, you know, certain kinds of real estate. So we'll maybe, possible purchase. yeah, and maybe he will want to buy it, but I don't, we don't know. I'm just saying that, yeah, there's a couple people that want to buy it, but we'll, we'll look more into that later. But if you guys need a landlord, Colin Anton is the landlord of choice. So anyway, if whenever I come back from BC to visit to maintain my motorcycles, maybe you could let me stay in the closet or something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was nice uh, talking to you guys. I'll talk to you guys again. Take care. Thanks.